learn how to code. So I want to start with some real basics. Today, the goal is to show you, number one, how to start coding in Python on your Mac or PC. Either way is fine. You don't need to download any special virtual machine or parallels, etc. You can do it right within your operating system. And so we're going to start with just a few things that you'll need to do before you can begin to learn to code in Python. So let's focus on that. We'll jump in now and look forward to making this simple and also getting you started on your journey of coding as soon as possible. Here we go. Okay, let's jump into Python. So the first step in order to use Python on your machine to begin learning how to code in Python, you need to download something onto your computer. Whether you use a Mac or a PC, great news, it will work either way. You don't need any advanced, complicated software. You don't have to run a virtual machine. You don't need to run parallels, for example. Some people like to do that on a Mac, and that's fine, but it's certainly not essential. So in order to get started, all you need to do is go to python.org, and I'll make sure to put the link below in the description. Click on python.org in the description, or go ahead and type it into your browser, whichever browser you prefer, and you will find yourself looking at what we're now looking at together. Once here, simply go to Downloads, and you will see in Downloads, Python, whatever version is available at the time you're watching the video, as of this moment, Python 3.9.1. Go ahead and click on that version, the newest version, and you'll be able to download this to your computer. Now, I won't go through the entire download because I've already downloaded it, and I don't want to uninstall and reinstall it because I use it quite a bit. But as you can see, it's downloaded very quickly. You'd simply double click, follow all the prompts to let this successfully install on your computer. Now, once successfully downloaded, and if you have any challenges, please send a message. Just go ahead and type it in as a comment, and I'll be sure to respond as quickly as possible if you have trouble actually installing Python. Once installed, I really encourage you to make sure if you're using a Mac or a PC, you want to make sure that it is accessible, and you'll see that this is what has been downloaded, IDLE is called, IDLE, I-D-L-E, which is Interactive Development and Learning Environment. So this is what you'll have. I would encourage you to drop it somewhere that's very convenient to find whenever possible, out of sight, out of mind. If you have it buried somewhere in folders or in menus, you may be less likely to jump into IDLE and spend some time coding whenever the time arises. If you see it, you're more likely to do it. So I recommend putting it right there. So we're going to go ahead and click into Idle and get started. Okay, so here we are in Idle. I've clicked the app to begin running it. It's open full screen mode. Here it is. And you'll see a bit of information at the top, including, importantly, the version that you're running. Now, just a bit of advice. If you're ever in the middle of a giant project, don't upgrade to a newer version of Python until you're finished with whatever you're doing because it can be a bit disruptive. So now that we're in what's called the idle shell, what's great about the idle shell, you can just play around with things and it's it's really harmless. You're not gonna do any damage to anything or anyone by playing inside the idle shell. Idle is interactive development and learning environment. It's a great place to really experiment. Now you'll also learn in future episodes, or you may already know this, how to create actual files with an idle. But just to give you an example, if we were just to do something simple, x equals 10, print x, guess what's going to happen? It's going to print 10 or x equals, let's just say, hi. So print x, what's it going to print? Hi or x is, there it is, hi. So you can play around with idle, have a lot of fun. You do need to have this downloaded or an equivalent software type application, depending on what you prefer. PyCharm is another that many use, which is great, and I use PyCharm as well. PyCharm does come with a cost, unless you happen to be a student with an arrangement where you can have it without a cost. But I'd recommend Idle to start anyways. It's always good to kind of start simple, and it's not just that it's simple in an inferior way. It's not inferior. It's simple in that it's just a great, harmless environment to not get confused, overwhelmed, and to learn and play and get set up. Now, I will show you one thing. If you wanted to actual, actually start coding, you'd simply go to File, New File, and here we go with an actual file where we can write our program. And we'll, we'll do this more in other episodes, but once you actually write a program, 
In order to run the program, you would need to save the program. So you'd go up to File, and you'd save as and put it somewhere organized, hopefully in a, in a specific folder for your coding experiments, labeled properly so you can find it later. All Python programs will always end in .py. And so that is kind of where it all begins. So in the shell, which is here, you can do relatively simple things, experiment, play around. If you want to do something more advanced and complicated, you'd open a new file. And this is where you'd start coding away. And you'll notice if I'm in an actual file and I say x equals 10 and x, nothing's going to happen. We're not in the shell. We're actually coding right now in, a, in an actual file that would need to be run. It's called run module. But what I've just written is not going to do really anything. So ignore this. I just wanted to show you how it works. Thank you for joining this episode. So at least you now know how to equip your machine, whether it be Mac or PC, to get started on your learning adventure into coding and to start with into Python. Okay, so as you've seen, the steps are quite simple on how to get started by enabling your machine, whatever you may be using, to be ready to code. And in future episodes, we will dig into some actual coding for now, at least you have what you need to get started, to experiment, and without fear of damaging your computer, this is very, very safe. So as long as you actually don't go into command prompt and start changing things, what we're doing is safe, effective, and actually you'll see it's fun. Stay tuned for more updates. Please click subscribe so you'll know when the next episode is released. Wish you the best. Take care. Goodbye.